I'm sure you all have uh, Easter plans if you haven't started them already. Uh, I know Easter means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Uh, it means Easter bunnies and chocolate and candy and eggs and coloring eggs and egg hunts and it also, especially on Sunday, going to church, you get your Easter clothes. I have my new Easter shirt on this morning. Uh, I'm sure some of you, uh, you know, experienced that as well. Shavar was hoping that we'd show the picture that I showed you last year of my three-piece suit as a four-year-old, my pastel blue, you know, uh, and that's, that, that picture does come to my mind every Easter. I mean, that's, th these are the things we think about. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I, with all the different... Um, Memories that we have of, of Easter services of the past with all the different plans we have, what we're going to have for lunch or where we're going to go or who all is coming over and is the rain going to mess with it? It's colder than I thought it was going to be. What's that going to do with our pictures? And we have all these different things in mind about this one holiday. I hope that so far with the songs we sung together, with the thoughts that have been shared with you, that you've been able to focus on what, what we truly believe about today about what we're celebrating today. And if you're a guest with us, if, you're, if, you're, if it's been a while since you've been in church, if you've never been to church before, if, you're, if you've been to church before and you've walked away from it, you, you just started questioning some things about just Christianity and the church and, and, and faith in general, welcome. We're glad you're here. This is the place for you. But I, I want us this morning for just a, just a few minutes to be reminded, and for those of you who, who don't know us and don't know our church family, to know what we believe about what we're celebrating today. And so if you've tuned out everything else or if you've got something else on your mind to do after this morning, I, I, I would hope that you would give me just a few minutes for your attention so that we all know, so that we're all clear, we're on the same page about what this church family, this body of believers believes about the resurrection of Jesus. We believe that there was a time when there was no sin in this world. There was no evil, no dishonesty, no, no anger, no racism, no abuse, no arrogance, no lust, no greed. There was a time when there was no war. There were no acts of terror. There, there were no weapons, no genocides. There was peace. There was love. There was innocence. There was purity and joy and life. And that's what God created. That's what God always wanted. That was, that was his intent for his creation. But we also believe that sin entered the world. We believe that, that mankind disobeyed God, that mankind chose his own desires over the will of God. And because of that, sin entered the world and it became a constant presence in the lives of all men and women. We believe that because of, of that sin, because we all wrestle and deal with sin, that there has to be punishment, that there has to be consequences. And the punishment, the, the part of that punishment is, is separation from God and, and separation from the life that he wanted us to have. Part of that punishment is death. And we believe that God loved us so much that he didn't want to stay separated from us, and he didn't want death to be the final chapter of our story. And so we believe with all of our hearts that Jesus was sent into this world, that God sent his son Jesus, that he really was fully God, and that he really was fully man. He was more than just a carpenter's son from some little town in the Middle East. He was more than just a famous prophet. He was more than just, than just a, a, a special miracle worker. We believe that Jesus of Nazareth really was the Son of God and that he really did come to this earth to set us free. Free from fear. Free from sin. Free from guilt. Free from despair. Free from death. Scripture shares with us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 that God demonstrated his love for us and that while we were still sinners, when we were dead in our sins, when we were covered in our sins and there wasn't a thing we could do about it, Christ died for us. We believe that, that Jesus Christ, through love and grace and power, humility, died a horrific death 
on a cross. We believe that, that maybe even the greater burden for Jesus on the cross was, was taken on our sin, was taken on our guilt, was taken on all of our horrible choices. Taking those to the cross with him, experiencing sin in his own body, in his own life, in his own heart for the first time. We believe that his enemies gloated, that Satan celebrated, and that his followers crumbled in sorrow and fear. And we believe that that is not the end of the story. We believe that on the third day, Jesus was alive again. Don't we believe that, church family? We believe that with all of our hearts. That life came back into his body, that the stone was rolled away, that Jesus came walking out of that tomb. That when his disciples came looking for him, they couldn't find him. That all they found was an angel, as mentioned in Mark chapter 16. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. We choose to believe that the story of the resurrection of Jesus is true. That we can't go to Jerusalem and find his body. That, that he had the power to heal. He had the power to forgive. And he had the power through Almighty God to be raised from the dead. We believe he's alive. We believe he's living. We believe he's active in this world. We believe he's active in our lives. We trust in that. We put our faith in that. We know there's still sin in this world. We know this is still a fallen and broken world that we're living in. We know that there's still pain and there's still abuse and there's still failure and there's still fear. We know that some of you, some of us, in this room this morning have experienced those things in incredibly personal ways. Some of you are wrapped up in some of those things right now. But we also believe that he's coming back. We believe that with all of our hearts. He said he was going to. In John chapter 14, beginning in verse 2, he says, I'm going there. I'm going to the Father. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back and take you to be with me so that you can be where I am. And folks, we're not scared of that day. We're not looking with dread towards that day. We are waiting for that day. We are hoping for it. We expect it. We look forward to it. When we get to leave this ugly, fallen, broken world and go be with him. Until that day comes, we live the best we can in expectation of it. And Things may not always be going that well down here, but we constantly expect something better there. That's what we believe. That's what we're celebrating today. That's what we're reminding ourselves of today. We're going to sing a couple of songs together to help us do that. To help us be reminded of, of just what it means to us to not only believe in Jesus' resurrection, but our resurrection as well. To believe that, that God had the power to raise Jesus from the dead and that God's that same power is, is in us through his Holy Spirit today. And that same power is going to raise us to life to be with him forever one of these days. We're expecting it. We're hoping for it. We're going to celebrate it right now. I'm looking forward to that day, aren't you? But we have life to live while we're here. Until that day comes. And... Oh, I have lots of stuff in my heart to share with you this morning, not a lot of time to do it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really abbreviate <laughs> what I had on my heart to share with you today. We've been going through, if, if you haven't been with us uh, the last several Sundays, we've been going through this series that we've been, we've been titled Follow. 
and, and talking about how God calls us to follow, how, how Jesus called people to follow him and what that meant in his culture of, of following your rabbi, following this person that, that you believe to have you know, the answers to life. And disciples back in Jesus' day would do everything they could to follow as closely as they could to their rabbi, to, to mimic everything they possibly could, to, to learn how to do everything that he did, to learn how to be just like him in every aspect of their lives. And we've gone through some of those stories together, looked at some of the people, you know, Peter stepping out of the boat and walking on water following Jesus because that's what his rabbi was doing. We've talked about what it means to, to listen to the voice of Jesus, to follow in the direction that he's going. We've talked about what it means when Jesus uh, would even confront some people and say, you're not ready to follow yet. Your heart's not ready. You're not ready to fully commit to this. And I wanted to take the time this morning to go back to, to Peter again at the end of Jesus' ministry. And we've seen Peter, uh, if you go through, through Scripture, you see Peter following Jesus on, a, on just on lots of different occasions. He... he as we said, he follows him, uh, you know, when Jesus first calls him, he says, come be my disciple, come follow me. And he follows him, and he follows him on the water, and he follows him. He gets to follow him into the room with hardly anybody else when Jesus raises a little girl from the dead. And he gets to follow Jesus on the mountain with hardly anybody else when Jesus is transformed into, into this, uh, this other uh, just likeness. And he got to experience that. And he's following Jesus, uh, uh, you know, in, in storms and down the road and with the crowds and you see uh, Peter constantly following Jesus. As a matter of fact, the night before Jesus died, Peter stands up and he makes a, a bold statement. He says in John chapter 13, Lord, why can't I follow you now? Jesus has told his disciples, I'm getting ready to go. He's talking about his crucifixion. I'm getting ready to go somewhere and right now you can't follow me. And Peter's going, why can't I? Jesus, I've followed you for three years now. I've gone everywhere that you've gone. I've done everything that you've done. I'll do it now. I'm ready to give my life for you. And if you know the story, you know that a few hours later, Jesus is arrested. They're, they're in a garden together, and Jesus is arrested. And Peter's trying to stick true to his commitment. Peter said, I'm going to follow you. I'll lay my life down for you. And there's a mob of people with clubs and spears and swords that are arresting Jesus. And Peter pulls out a sword. Now, he's a fisherman. He doesn't really know how to use it that well. He takes a swing at somebody and cuts off the guy's ear. And Jesus picks up the ear, puts it back on the, on the guy's head, looks at Peter and says, stop it. And Jesus allows himself to be arrested. And what I want you to see this morning, what I wanted to point out to you is, is this scripture. It's on the back of your announcement sheets this morning as well. It comes from Mark chapter 14 where it says in verse 54, Peter followed him at a distance. As they're carrying Jesus off to be put on trial and eventually to be crucified, Peter follows at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sits down with the guards and warms himself at the fire. The, the phrase there that I want you to key on, if you got your Bibles, underline it, circle it, draw a square around it, something, because I want you to notice how Peter is now following Jesus. Up to this point, Peter's been right behind Jesus as a disciple would with his rabbi. He's following in step with him. He's sitting beside him every chance that he gets. He's, he's the one of all the disciples that followed Jesus out on the water. He's been right in step, right behind Jesus. He's done everything he could to, to be completely connected with Jesus so he can learn how to be just like him. Except in this moment. There's four different books of the Bible that talk about the story of the life of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Three of the four describe Peter this way. And when Jesus is arrested, Peter starts following at a distance. He hasn't quit. He hasn't turned his back and walked away, but there's a gap now. And, and there's lots of reasons that we can come up with. There's lots of reasons why uh, we, we could think of, and maybe even we would get the chance to talk to Peter and ask him, man, what was going through your head? What was going through your heart right then? I mean, this hasn't worked out the way it was supposed to. Jesus was supposed to establish this kingdom. He was supposed to be a, a mighty king reigning on his throne, and I was going to be one of his generals. I was going to be one of the guys close to the throne room, maybe my chair right next to his. And, and he has all this power. He has all this authority. Nobody can arrest him. Nobody can kill him. This is not happening the way Peter thought it was going to. 
Now things are falling apart. My rabbi has been arrested. The things I put my trust in seem to, be, seem to be falling apart, or at least not happening the way that I thought they were going to. What is happening? And I think Peter, of all the different reasons we could give for why he now is following a distance, I think the biggest reason is just, just doubt. He had to wonder why all this was happening the way it was. He had to wonder. In that moment, he had to wonder, is Jesus really the Son of God? Why would he allow himself? Why, why didn't he put up a fight? Why would he allow himself to be crucified? Is this really the one I was supposed to be putting my faith in? And then maybe Peter even had doubts about his own, his own faith and his own ability to follow. I mean, he made big promises. I'll follow you no matter what. And now that's a little scary. There's a gap between Jesus and Peter that hadn't been there. Have you been there before? Have you struggled with doubt, fear, stress, temptation, sin, time, focus? Things that, that pull us away, things that cause there to be some distance between us and Jesus. Not that we've completely walked away, not that we're giving up on our faith, but just there's a gap. I'm not as close as I was. I'm not following like I used to. That's where Peter finds himself. And if that's where you are this morning, or if that's where you find yourself in the near future, can I give you a thought of hope? I believe for all of us, myself included, there are going to be times in my walk with Jesus when I'm following at a distance. That's, I'm not rationalizing. That's not an excuse. That's just the fact. I'm human enough and mistake-filled enough and sometimes fearful enough there's sometimes a gap. It's happened to me before. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen again. There are going to be times when I'm, when I'm following Jesus from a distance, when, when, when I doubt him, when I doubt me, when I doubt the church, when I struggle with sin, when I struggle with my past, when I struggle with fear, when I struggle with just focus and, and, and being, paying closer attention to something else, there will be a gap. And what I want to share with you this morning is when that time comes, when that moment comes, when you're at a distance from Jesus, what do you do? Three quick steps and we're done. Number one thing, when I'm following at a distance, when doubt creeps in and things in my life pull at my heart and my faith, number one thing, don't quit following. The easiest thing that Peter could have done, the most natural thing, the thing we probably wouldn't even fault Peter for. Because when Jesus arrested, Peter had, had tried to kill somebody in the name of Jesus. And Jesus told him to quit and let himself be arrested and carried off. It would be totally natural. There were some of us who would be like, well, Peter, me too. I'd just turn around and walk away. Done. I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. It, it doesn't make sense anymore. We wouldn't totally fault Peter for that. That would have been the easiest thing to do. But what I want you to understand is he still kept following he didn't quit. He didn't completely walk away. He still kept following. As a matter of fact, all four Gospels, all, all four stories of the life of Jesus talk about how the disciples somehow, some way, doesn't go into detail, but all of them made their way back to the room they were in the night before Jesus died. Who knows how far they scattered? Who knows how far away they were from the cross when Jesus was being crucified? Who knows how hard it was for them to come walking back and slinking into that room? But they all came back, including Peter. Was the gap there? Yes. Was, was he struggling? Was he following at a distance? Yes. But he didn't quit following. Don't you quit either. There will be gaps sometimes. Don't quit. Don't quit following. Number two... Allow Jesus to close the gap. Allow Jesus to draw you closer. It, it, my guess is, and I've shared this with the church family before, when Peter heard that Jesus was alive, it was mixed emotions. Excitement. The tomb is empty. He rose again. He said he wouldn't. He did. He rose again. Oh, he's going to know what I did. 
He's going to know I walked away. He's going to know that in the time when he probably needed a friend the most, I was the least kind of friend. I told people I didn't even know who he was. You can imagine the guilt that Peter's dealing with. Big claims, big promises, total failure. And yet, when the angel tells the women that came to the tomb, go tell his disciples that he's alive. Notice how they word it. Mark chapter 16, verse 7. Go tell his disciples and who? Peter. You make sure you tell Peter. I want to see him. Not because Jesus wants to gripe at him. Not because Jesus wants to put the spotlight on him and go, where were you, Peter? Thought you'd never leave my side. Because Jesus wants Peter to know, I still love you. I still accept you. I still want you to follow. Jesus is taking the initiative to close the gap. So that Peter's not at a distance anymore. We need to let him do that for us. When the, when the gaps come, and they will, we need to let Jesus close the distance. We need to hear the voice of Jesus. We need to pray for it. We need to pay attention and listen for it. And to hear the voice of Jesus say, just, just call out and say, tell my disciples and Peter and Marshall and you fill in the blank. I still love him. I still love her. I want them to follow. I'm closing the gap. Let's get back to where we were. And the last thing, once you've allowed Jesus to close the gap, you need to allow Jesus to go to work. Allow Jesus to go to work. When, once, once Jesus had drawn Peter closer, once he, he, had, he had reconnected with him in the relationship that they had before, he started to work through Peter. You go in the book of Acts, you know, you have those four stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they talk about Jesus, and then Jesus goes to heaven. And the next book, the book of Acts, talks about these disciples. Now what do they do now that Jesus is gone? And one of the first things that Peter does is preach a sermon to talk about Jesus in front of thousands of people, which as far as we know, he had never done before. And, then, and that's in chapter 2. And then in chapter 3, Peter's walking through the temple and he sees a lame man. And he tells the lame man, get up and walk. And he does. And people are, people are amazed by it. And they're, they're asking, how did this happen? How did this man that we see every day who's never been able to walk, how is he able to walk? And the man's like, well, this guy healed me. And Peter basically makes this, this bold statement. It starts talking in chapter 3 about it's the power of Jesus. I didn't do anything. It's the power of Jesus working through me that caused this man to live. And he goes on and reminds these people, who some of whom have probably been there when Jesus was on the cross. Some of whom have probably been in the crowd saying, crucify him, crucify him. Some of those same people, Peter says in, in Acts chapter 3, beginning verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we're witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you all can see. I, I want you to grasp, folks, the full impact of what, of what Peter is saying here. In this moment, Peter's not at a distance behind Jesus anymore. There's not a gap anymore. He's following in step with Jesus and with the spirit that Jesus has put inside him. He says, I've... I've seen him. I've touched him. I've hugged him. I've listened to him. I've heard his voice. Call me by name. This is real. Jesus, who is dead, is alive. And he's the one at power to heal this man. Peter let Jesus draw him back into a closer connection, and then he let Jesus use him to bless someone else and to share the message of grace, and hope, and acceptance. Folks, that's what we need to do too. God's got plans for you. Jesus has big plans to use you. You need to let him do it. Even when the times come when we're following at a distance. Okay, so what is, what is Easter 
have to do with Peter following at a distance and, and Jesus filling in the gap? I think that Peter would I think that Peter was saying in Acts chapter 3, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this man can walk. I think Peter would, would look at himself and say, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there's not a gap between me and Jesus anymore. I'm not at a distance anymore. And my question for you this morning Because of the resurrection of, of Jesus, what can we say about you? In a moment, we're going to sing a song together. It's, it's a song of, of praise. It's a song of prayer. It's a song of hope. It's a song that calls out to God and, and, and God calling out to us. God looking at us as his children, the times when, when, there's, when there's darkness, when there's a gap, when we're not as close as we used to be, and God reaching out and wrapping his arms around us and, and, and pulling us in and holding us close and saying, I love you, my child, I love you. We can believe the words of the song that we're about to sing are true because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what I want what. What I want us to feel the full impact of this morning is just making that statement. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because of the power of the empty tomb, I'm no longer bound by my sin and my guilt. Because of the resurrection, I'm no longer controlled by my addiction. Because of the resurrection, I, my marriage is better than it ever has been. Because of the resurrection, my faith is more solid than it ever used to be. Because of the resurrection, my anger has been replaced by forgiveness. Because of the resurrection, my, my prejudice has been replaced by compassion. Because of the resurrection, my laziness has been replaced by enthusiasm and hope. Because of the resurrection, my worry and my stress has been replaced by, by peace and by joy, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the distance that I have felt at, at different times in my life, or maybe the distance that I feel right now, can be closed and replaced with an intimate connection with Almighty God. It's because Jesus rose from the grave that that can happen. And if you haven't experienced that closeness to Jesus, today's the day to do it. We'll stand together in a minute and we'll sing a song together. And you're welcome to come down and say, today's the day. I'm ready to, for, the, for the gap to be closed. I'm ready to, to stop staying away from Jesus and start following. I'm ready today. We'll help make that happen. If you're sitting here this morning and, and you recognize... I'm a, I'm a believer. I haven't quit following. But, man, there's, there's distance between me and Jesus. We welcome you. We invite you to come forward and share that with us. There's no judgment here. You're sitting around in a room full of other people who are constantly wrestling with that gap themselves. And we will welcome you, and we will love you, and we will pray for you, and we will work together to allow Jesus to close that gap so you can be in intimate relationship with him. It can happen today, and it can happen because of the resurrection. Praise God. there's a need in your life, we want to help. Let's work on it together while we stand and sing.